G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Over the past couple of months, my channel has mainly been focused around the sort of tier 5, tier 6, and now tier 7 areas of jets. We're going to be taking a little bit of a step back into props, as you guys might have been seeing. I am always happy to cover jets, but having a having a look at props, uh, for me, is a little bit more realistic. It is something that the average viewer can more uh, sort of recognize and sort of take from. These are the types of things that these players can potentially learn things a little bit more effectively instead of sort of having to wait to jet tier to apply the things that I might be talking about. Today we're going to be having a look at one of my all-time favorite planes, the P63C5. And for those of you who have been on the channel for a very, very long time, you will probably remember one of the videos that I have uploaded that uh, talks about this plane being able to carry a five or carry a whole team. I think I ended up getting six or seven kills in that match and winning the game by carrying against the Germans on Sicily. Now, this plane has basically not changed a whole lot. The P63C5 is still absolutely fantastic. You're not going to be always, of course, getting these types of games because your team will sometimes fall apart or sometimes the Germans will just outclimb you every single day but other days you will be put against teams that uh, maybe they don't climb as well or maybe they don't do as particularly well they don't hold on to their energy maybe they get forced down by some enemies that are a little bit higher than them or alternatively they decide to seagull after the first bomber that they see resulting in them losing a whole bunch of energy that they otherwise needed to engage some fighters the P-63 can really take advantage of a 1v1, but always seems to end up on the back foot if there's more than one enemy in the area. So, as a result, the P-63 needs to take its fights very carefully. You need to either be on the front foot by diving onto opponents in boom and zoom maneuvers, or alternatively finding 1 versus 1s, where either you're going to be getting some help very shortly, or you're going to be able to knock off the enemy before his friends show up. So with this match, what I'm going to be doing is putting myself into a decent climb and trying to get myself above the enemy uh, sort of planes here. If I can get myself above them, then that means that I can just stay on the front foot all match. And we'll kind of see how that type, type of uh, activity or that how that type of uh, gameplay will play out maybe in the next match. The P63C5 is the plane that I actually used to grind out the French tech tree. Back in the day, I didn't really like the SO8000 Naval. I do love the plane now because I'm a little bit better and I know how to utilize it a little bit better, but the Naval back in the day was very, very tough for me, and so instead I gravitated towards the P63C5, placed a talisman on it, and I still enjoyed this plane to, to this day, really. Back in that day, uh, the G55 was on sale, and so everyone was spamming out the G55S, and it was basically this thing versus G55S, and it was pretty damn painful. The G55S used to actually be at 4.3, and the P63 has always remained at 4.0. Uh, I think that is fairly suitable for this plane, uh, and it does sort of sort of fall behind when it does get up tiered, and it does do pretty okay. Uh, no, pretty well in an up tier. This plane is also a little bit strange. It has one of the weirdest armaments in the entire game, and by that I mean it has 450 cals, which isn't really that weird, but it has a 37mm cannon that is in the nose. Now, you might think, well, if they've got it in the nose, maybe it goes through the engine block, but no, it actually doesn't. It sits in the nose. Um, it's a fairly low velocity 37mm cannon, and as a result, I'm going to try and get some kills with it, but you'll see how much of a shotgun it can be. This is an XP-50, and XP-50s are very scary, so I'm going to pitch up and try and get a nice kill really early on. I'm going to try and follow with the speed that he's getting, and because he's gone down into a little bit of a dive, I'm going to roll over, pick up a little bit more speed, and then just check my surroundings really quickly to make sure that there are no enemies that are going to come in and dive on me. But because I've noticed the zero, I'm going to keep my altitude. I'm not going to dive in after the XP-50, I'm going to sort of try and remain at the altitude that I am in order to engage other targets that might be of higher priority. For example, a good one would be the Zero, but now that I've noticed the XP-50 climbing a little bit, I am going to engage him because that's when he becomes a bit of a threat to me, as well as being a bit of an easier target. So if this XP-50 can just position himself in a really nice spot there for me, I can pilot snipe him. That's no worry at all, and it is a very nice easy kill. Notice how I picked up a little bit of speed at that little dive. I'm going to put that to use a little bit and gain some distance 
from the A6M because I know the A6M is a little bit on the slow side and because he's climbing so hard I really have to utilize my speed because there's no way I'm going to outclimb a zero even at this altitude. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for that zero to maybe not be paying attention to me maybe hopefully he can be paying attention to someone else but unfortunately he is still heading over towards me. This zero can potentially be the end of me and I need to be extremely careful in, in thinking about how I'm going to engage him. My original plan was basically pitch up, get some shots off, and then just keep running because this plane really does struggle in a dogfight against a zero, kind of like all other planes sort of struggle against a zero in a fight like this. So I'm going to uh, sort of execute my plan, pitch up, get some shots off, hopefully try and get some damage. Look how slow the zero is though, and that is what killed him. Because he was so damn slow, I was able to pitch up and get the guns on just in time to get that 37 to land nice and true. The 37, because it's not... Uh, my guess would be that with this 37, it's... Uh, because it's got a kind of shortish barrel, and because it's not being sort of secured in place by the engine block, unlike, say, the Yak-9Ts, alternatively, this could just be a really poorly made 37, uh, like, historically speaking. Uh, but the accuracy is terrible on this thing. You don't want to be going for long-range shots. You want to leave that to the 50 cals. They are more accurate, and they probably do more damage at range anyway. So the 50 cal is going to be your best bet in those sort of longer ranges. I would use the 37 a little bit more for sort of shotgun purposes. So pretend to ignore that 37 when you're at those longer ranges. Just sort of let it fire out. If you want to bind your buttons, then by all means, you should bind your buttons. But in this case here, I'm not really going to bother. I'm just going to sort of spend the 30 mil as is. And if it hits, it hits. If not, well, I'm aiming the 50 cals anyway. So that's kind of the way I see it. So we have ourselves a little zero here. The little zero is not paying attention. And like I said, because we're on the front foot, it is extremely easy to uh, basically just make a mess of little things like a zero. This particular zero, because he wasn't paying attention, allowed me to basically sneak up behind him. And with these ones, I am very, very convinced that they are the... There's, there's a particular model of A6M and it just puts out fires because it runs out of fuel so damn quickly. And so, that's why I go for the re-engage. Otherwise, I probably would have just left him to die and um, yeah, just left it at that. So we're going to be moving on a little bit, looking for the last two enemies in the stack. And here we are with one particular P51, going for a couple of shots, but only getting an assist. And I'm going to put myself straight up into the vertical in order to get this P51 to follow through because I know I'm going to win a vertical fight, but my teammates decide that they can scoop that up too. And that's more than fine as well. So I'm going to be a little bit of an asshole here and, and just sort of fly next to him. I'm not going to kill Steel because that's rude and mean. Um, the other guys worked hard, just as hard for that kill as I did, let's be fair, and I'm not going to steal it. I'm just going to sort of fly next to him and uh, put on smoke, which is a, a little bit of a dick move, I think. But uh, in retrospect, it was kind of, you know, sorry, at, at the time it was kind of nice. It was kind of funny, but um, in retrospect, it's, it's, not, it's a little bit mean, but that's okay. So... We have one more enemy to look out for, and I don't quite know where he is. I can take a guess that he's close to the enemy airfield, either rearming and repairing. He's got a little bit of activity. He could be a bomber. He could be anything. So this is kind of what I want to do, just look for him. And it turns out that as soon as I tap out of the menu, there he is. He's above me. And that's not a good thing, because if this guy knows what he's doing and knows how to maintain his energy, then he can potentially be a big threat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to climb which does sound really stupid, but you've got to remember that you have, despite some of these players acting like complete bots, you have real people on the other side of that, of that plane. And so what you want to do is you want to pretend that you're a bad player in order to get them to make a mistake. Um, I can't remember, there's a, there's a move in, I think it's some sort of martial arts or fencing, where you basically just play really shit and then you use that at, to your advantage to make the enemy a little bit more relaxed to the point where they start making mistakes and that's kind of what I've done here. I know I can turn inside a P51 even if it's a P51C and I've critted him to the point where he's so crippled that uh, my god I think a person in a wheelchair would be would be very happy to uh, have this guy's mobility. So P P51C here not looking in a good way and uh, it's only a matter of time before the 50 cals and the 37s do their magic to give me four nice little kills and a pretty decent amount of uh, of, of fun. 
This plane, with some incredible shots, can do some magic, but you just need to take them as one-on-ones. So let's move on to the next match here. We have Americans again and Japanese again. You'll find that against the Germans, because for some reason they like to hunt in wolf packs, you won't get as many good games. But uh, I have had some pretty damn fine matches against the, uh, the Germans. It's just uh, I don't really get the high kill counts, which is what I'd love to show you guys on the channel. Some very interesting and some... Uh, like very good gameplay is what I'm what I'm after here. So A6M, I've noticed him way too late. I'm gonna squeeze off one or two shots, but oh man, that is just that is a sketchy ass head on. I probably shouldn't be doing that, but I have damaged the A6M, and now I'm gonna put the plane into a vertical because I'm pretty sure I've damaged something in his engine block, and therefore he's not gonna have the climb rate that uh, I will otherwise have. Plus, I have picked up a little bit of speed in the uh, pre-dogfight, so I should be able to either rope-a-dope him or somehow come around and get myself a kill on the zero. I'm going to roll back around, but I think he is just in that area where he's able to fire back. You can see he's firing off those little uh, 50 cals, or uh, I think they're actually 7.7s. Seven so he's, he's pretty slow, and what I'm going to do is just try and stay nice and vertical. If I can keep this fight in the vertical, then that means that he will likely stall out because he may be having engine problems. And just with a little bit of clever usage of flaps, I'm able to pretty much do a rope dope on him, basically destroying him. He, the, he, there is no more zero left to, uh, to to kamikaze. So disappointment to the to the fatherland. P51C, we have another P51C, and he's decided to go for a teammate, and a P63. Now, this P63 could be the same model as me, and so if I let him get onto an energy advantage, then I'm screwed, but it's all right. It's a P63A, which is not too bad, but still, I don't really want to be mucking around with another P63 on the map, so I'm going to spray a little bit and only get him when he crosses over. You can see the inaccuracy there in the 37. It doesn't always land true, which is kind of frustrating for me, but it's something that you just have to work around in this plane. If there is one thing that I could ever change in the P63, it would swap that 37 out for an a and 2 and my god, this thing would be an absolute monster. I think that if there was that one change, it would basically have P P38 armament. So you end up with this thing that just turns really nicely, um, climbs okay, and has absolute god tier armament. That would be the dream for me. But uh, unfortunately, the Americans decided to throw a 37 because I don't know. I genuinely don't know. This this 37 is an absolute turd. But um, it's fine. We can kind of use it for our close range combat, like I said earlier. Now, remember me talking about that uh, maneuver where you sort of pretend that you're dumb and maybe lure your enemies in? Well, that's kind of what I'm doing here. This P61C, or P61, P51C, is kind of falling for the bait and going for the dogfight with me. So I'm gonna go for the shots again, just getting some hits, unfortunately, unlike last time. But you can see that I am just scraping in here, getting a couple of very, very narrow misses here. And I'm just going to keep keep going in the dogfight. If I know I'm winning, I'm going to stick with it. If I'm losing, well, I would just book it and run. But unfortunately for this P51, he decides that he would rather sit and die and commit to a dogfight than run and try and energy fight me. As a P51, I would probably have gone for the energy fight, to be honest. This plane, whilst it does retain energy quite well, a P51 is going to do that a lot better. And uh, especially at high altitudes, you're going to have a lot more easy, uh, a lot more of an easy time sort of working your energy and your speed at that sort of level. Whereas with the Allison engine that you're stuck with here, you're kind of left with turd mark for whatever it is. It's, it's, it's a pretty shit engine. Uh, if this thing had a supercharger or if it was just, you know, a Merlin, which is infinitely better, then I think we would have no problems here at all with the P63. It would be just some absolute crazy ass monster. Uh, however, at this sort of altitude here, these lower altitudes, the Allison engine actually does fairly well, so you can pick up some fairly good speed. And this is the kind of altitude that you want to be fighting at, these sort of mid to low altitudes. That doesn't mean at all that you shouldn't climb in this thing, because if you don't have an altitude advantage, then you're going to suffer. But certainly if you are able to fight, or if you're able to lure your opponents down to sea level, then you're going to have a much easier time at dealing with those opponents and uh, sort of making mincemeat out of them, because you just have a lot more engine power relative to at high altitude. Now, A36 here decides small PP energy last minute head-ons, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into the vertical because I know I have a shit ton of energy and I can just quickly roll back on this A36 who has been sort of fart assing around at low altitudes. 
So I'm just rolling around a little bit trying to get myself a nice shot onto this A36 when he spots a Spitfire and decides that he's going to full commit to the Spitfire. The Spitfire thinks it is a wise idea, the A36 thinks it's a wise idea, and because he's committed so much time and energy to the Spitfire, it allows me to get in there with a 37 and blast the shit out of him, which is just easy. It's just nice. When you get these particular games, when you work down your opponents properly, you end up with a very, very solid result every single time. Getting your altitude over your opponent is your first step, and if you can't do that, then your next step is to try and get 1v1s. If your team has all died by that point, and you're like 1 versus 5 at altitude, well, you can just kiss your ass goodbye, because that's how War Thunder works, but if you can try at least and use maybe 2 or 3 teammates to get some results, maybe 1 or 2 kills is all you need, then you can actually give yourself some really, really great games. And the P-63 is just one of those planes that is just so damn good at achieving that. Here we are in a vertical dogfight here with the P-36, uh, P-36, P-39, which is the predecessor to this particular plane, the P-63. So we know that this plane is a little bit heavier, plus he's got rockets, plus he's uh, probably got this plane from the Battle Pass, and so he might not be extremely experienced in the P-39 therefore allowing me to slip on the inside. Now, I don't actually know if the P-39 is better at turning. I would assume that it has less engine power and uh, maybe has a little bit of... Uh, I don't know. I don't actually know. I just took the gamble there with the P-39, and if I was going to lose it, well, I was just going to put the nose down, go for a bit of speed, and come back to my teammates, or alternatively try a little bit more of climbing or vertical dogfighting and see how I go with the P-39, but I got it all good, and the match was a beautiful success. Anyway, ladies and gents, that'll do it for today. Thank you very much for watching. I sincerely appreciate all of the support with the channel over the last couple weeks. It really makes me very, very happy indeed. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.